partner Emily's 13 year old son. He's a fan of Greek mythology, so I had gotten him a pop up book on Greek mythology. And we were looking at it together, and there was a page on Pandora's box. And he asked me, What do you think is in Pandora's box? You know, like hypothetically. And I had an immediate thought come to mind, an immediate response, because it's something I had been thinking about a lot, and I still think about it a lot. And I had actually been using Pandora's box to illustrate my feelings on it. So what I said to him was, I think that in Pandora's box is the scientific proof that free will is an illusion. That this feeling that you have, that you are in control, that there is something inside you in control of every decision you make isn't real. That it's based on an illusion. If they could prove that with science so that it was impossible to deny, I feel like that's something we might want to keep inside Pandora's box. We might not want to know that. I said, what do you think is in Pandora's box? He said, I was just going to say a bunch of monsters, which I think I would probably prefer. Because the, the intuition that we have free will is so central to our identity and the idea that we don't, that there's something else in control, so to speak, is kind of terrifying. But let's talk about this. There, it is possible to have a scientific conversation about it because neuroscience has been looking at this. But it's, in my opinion, it's in the early stages. So the work that neuroscience is doing um, is coming to conclusions that are actually inconclusive. Um, there's a debate running about this. Um, I can put some links in the description below if you want to pursue that further. Or looking at the kind of two sides of, of the, the subject regarding uh, what science, neuroscience, has to say about free will. For the time being, the only meaningful conversation about free will is a philosophical one. So let's talk about that. In philosophy of, of free will, there are basically two camps. You can either be a compatibilist or an incompatibilist. And within incompatibilism, there are two schools of thought. The first school is the one that feels intuitively true, and that is libertarian free will, which means that we have absolute free will. This would be kind of traditional in the sense that most religions seem to have this opinion of free will. You know, God didn't make us to be robots. We can choose to serve him. We can choose to love him. Um, you know, all the bad things that are happening on the planet are because of God's gift of free will, um, etc., etc. Um, the accountability that, that religion seems to want to put on people, the moralizing that religion seems to do, all rests on this concept of libertarian free will. And to be clear, when I'm saying libertarian, I'm, it's not to be confused with the political ideology, uh, you know, political or social libertarianism. However, I do think there's some crossover between the two. Uh, from my conversation with libertarians, I think they kind of uh, balk at the idea of, of rejecting philosophical libertarian free will. But that's, a, that's another subject. So for libertarian free will to be true, this is what it means. And this is kind of, if I can just make this point and you can come away with it, understanding this point, um, I'll have been successful in this video. For libertarian free will to be true, that means that you can make a decision now, and then in a month from now, hypothetically, you could rewind the universe to the moment that you made that decision, with the universe being in exactly the same state, every neuron in your brain. You've had all the same experiences up until then. You have, you're in the same environment. The cocktail of hormones in your body at that moment is the same. If everything were the same, when you rewound to that moment, you could have made, or you could make, a different decision. 
That is the implication of libertarian free will. And at any given moment, you have absolute control over the choice you're going to make. And I've thought about this so much now that I, I don't even really understand what that means. Because it seems pretty clear to me that if everything were exactly the same, at the moment you make the decision, every single time you're going to make the same decision. If the state of your neurons are the same, and the hormones, etc., etc. So in my opinion, libertarian free will is clearly wrong. We don't have libertarian free will. Now the other school of thought within incompatibilism is determinism. Determinism says that everything that happens is the thing that was always going to happen. That when the Big Bang, Big Bang happened, it was like somebody hit the first domino and everything that's happened since is just the next domino falling. In other words, every cause has an effect and every thought you have is an effect of a prior cause. Whether that cause be related to your upbringing or your environment or the hormones or the state of your neurons and synapses at that moment. And then no matter how much you deliberate on a, on a question, the choice that you come to in the end is the choice you would always make if you were to rewind the universe to that moment. And therefore, free will is an illusion. Full stop. That, that is the position of determinism. And it's called this, these, this dichotomy of determinism versus the libertarian free will is called incompatibilism because they can't both be true. It's either a deterministic universe or a universe in which we have libertarian free will. You do have one more option. And this is the second main category that I mentioned earlier. And that is compatibilism. If I'm being totally honest, I don't fully understand compatibilism yet. Uh, Dan Dennett speaks about it a lot. He disagrees with thinkers like Sam Harris, who argue for determinism, saying that we do have choice, and the fact that we make choices is meaningful enough that you can't say we don't have free will. I want to believe that compatibilism is the best conclusion because it allows me to feel like I'm being rational in the sense that I recognize libertarian free will can't be true while still holding on to free will of a kind. One way to look at compatibilism is maybe accepting that we don't have free will but that we do have free won't. In other words, we have impulses that come up that are the effect of a prior cause. And we can choose to act on those impulses or not act on those impulses. Another way to look at that is that you are not the thinker of thoughts. Your brain produces thoughts in the same way that your liver produces bile. It's, it's not something that any special soul or self is producing. It's not magical. It's just your brain doing what it does. It spits out thoughts. But there is some you in there that can decide which train of thought to get on. And I feel like there is some kind of agency behind that. That the choice you make whether or not to get on a certain train of thought is a meaningful choice. And in some sense, exercising free will. That's all I have to say for the time being about compatibilism. What I'd like to discuss now is some of the implications for these different ways of looking at free will. Let's say that determinism became the dominant understanding of free will. You know, Pandora's box is open, science can prove we don't have free will, now everybody just has to accept 
that determinism is true? Like, what, what would that kind of society look like? What would be the effect of that cause? Well, there's been some studies showing that pe people behave in a less moral or ethical way after reading a paragraph that persuades, is trying to persuade them that we don't have free will. You know, one person will read a paragraph that's neutral on the subject, the other person will read a paragraph that is being persuasive that we don't have free will. The person who reads the one that says we don't have free will will behave in a less moral, ethical way. There's been a few different studies for this, and I can put links in the description below for that as well. So that's negative. Um, you know, people's feeling of accountability starts to be, to diminish when they confront this idea that they're not really in control. So I think that in itself is reason enough to challenge determinism. Like maybe it's not something we should even be studying if that is going to have such, if it, if it would have a really negative effect on society. So that's one possible scenario. Now, one of the negatives about libertarian free will is that it tends to make us too focused on kind of a revenge mentality when it comes to consequences and punishment. Because we have this feeling that everybody should be held accountable for everything they do and we can feel personally slighted by people to an extreme. You know, if we allow for at least determinism to be partly true from like a compatibilist perspective, that means that to an extent, there's a reason for every mean thing that a person does. And if we had had their brain state at the time that they did the bad thing, we would have done the same thing. So I think it allows us to be a little bit more compassionate towards people who have harmed others. Now we, we can't just let them continue harming people, of course, but letting go of this idea of, of everybody being the, the free agent of everything they do um, allows more room for love and compassion, in my opinion, and that's good. You know, we're going to treat prisoners in a in a better way. You know, we might look more critically at uh, the death penalty, and I think it can even help us be more compassionate towards ourselves. You know, we can live in this place of of guilt for mistakes we've made in the past. But if you realize that if you were to re rewind the universe to that moment, you'd make the same decision again. I think it makes it a little easier for you to let go of that and say, well, so that was then, I made that mistake then, that was the mistake I was always going to make, now how can I use that information for the future to make better choices? Even if that means that the choices I make in the future are still determined, I'm learning. My brain is in a different state than it was then, and that's a good thing. I'm evolving. I don't need to live in the past and worry about mistakes I made then. So those are my thoughts on free will, um, the different kind of schools of thought regarding free will and some of the consequences of those different schools of thought. Let me know what you think. Do you think we have free will? Is free will an illusion? Is it some combination of the two? Should we even be having this conversation? Is it a dangerous conversation? Let me know what you think in the comments below. And always remember that there are more things in heaven and earth than are dreamt of in our philosophies.